I think that um, I was attracted to my field from a, um, from a young age because I was always a reader. Um, when I was young, I grew up in Maine, uh, in a rural area. We always spent a lot of time going to the library, and um, I read, um, you know, from a pretty early age, uh, books that fascinated me. I could just go in the library and pick things, and I was like many, uh, you know, guys from my generation. I loved uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's *The Lord of the Rings*. Um, as I grew older, I got into science fiction, um, and in high school, you know, I read much of the popular literature that you would in high school, and I was driven by the fact um, that I didn't understand everything in it. So I started out just wanting to have an education similar to the education that my favorite authors had. I wanted to know what J.R.R. Tolkien knew. You know, I wanted to know what C.S. Lewis knew. I wanted to know the languages that they knew. So I started taking Latin when I was in high school. And I went to college um, with the same uh, type of goal. I want to learn what these guys know. I want to know what shaped their vision um, and what shaped their world. Um, so I wanted to learn more about philosophy, about literature, about language. Um, and it really led me to taking ancient Greek. Um, mainly as an accidental requirement of the field I chose to pursue. In classics, uh, at least where I studied, you had to learn ancient Greek if you wanted a degree. Um, so it took a couple semesters, it was something I did, and then in my junior year I um, took a course on Homer in Greek. Um, and from the moment I, I started that course, I knew I was reading something different. Um, every line in Homer, um, every line of poetry is a self-contained unit of meaning. Um, unlike anything else I've ever seen. Um, and it's really hard to explain unless you start like learning the Greek. Um, so that started me down on this path of trying to understand the way the language works, why it's different from everything else, um, and how it really produces meaning in a different way. Um, and so all along, you know, I've gone on other sorts of intellectual journeys um, to just bring more uh, to help me understand this literature. So I've learned more about language, I've studied some linguistics, um, I've learned more about the history and the culture that surrounds it, um, and also the intellectual history behind it, the philosophy and the history. Um, and, you know, in each step it's been tremendously rewarding and exciting. It's opened up more questions perhaps than answers, um, but it has been exhilarating. The process in the humanities uh, can often be a mix of accident and inspiration. Um, and I try to be open to both of them. Uh, so what I do is I always start out with the text, which is why I'm holding it in my hands. Um, I always start out reading it and trying to figure out what occurs to me while I'm reading it and why it occurs to me. So if I find something interesting, um, I'll look at it more closely and think, of, well, uh, am I processing this in the right way? Um, and how does this text even develop its meaning on a basic level, linguistically? Um, and then I start to look at comparative passages, um, and then I start to examine different authors to see if they lose, use language in the same way. Um, so in the example I talked about before with the performative future, I actually started out thinking, well, the future doesn't quite work here, right? So I start out with the question, why does Zeus talk in this way in this passage? And the only way to answer that question, believe it or not, is to look at every instance of the future in Homeric Greek. Um, so my process is, start, is to start with small questions and then answer them by looking at the big picture and seeing the way that they, the, the big picture relates with the small instances of that. And then experimenting with it to see if my hypothesis about the way language works actually stands up um, in other authors and other texts. Um, and so it's that um, alternation between the individual instances and the language as a whole and even the culture as a whole um, that sort of creates a conversation um, that I go through while I'm doing my work. Um, and in the end, the, you know, the product I come up with, you know, is an article or piece that explains the process and the product in the end. I've been fascinated by the Homeric epics for 10, 15 years or longer. Um, and so my, my main goal has always been to try to understand um, what makes them so attractive throughout time. Why people keep returning to these texts um, for answers, for illumination, or for reflections on their own lives. Um, so my main like uh, arching goal um, is just to try to understand them better and to try to help other people understand them better. Um, so over the past few years, I've worked on um, a general introduction to Homer um, to help everybody look at him um, in a new way, in a way to show how enlightening and dynamic um, the Iliad and the Odyssey can be. The Homeric epics um, were 
you know, combination of CNN and MTV in the ancient world. Um, and that they tapped into everything that was current and lively and sacred at the same time. I mean, that we have nothing that's exactly equivalent. I mean, for us, we would have to combine the Bible with our most popular entertainment. You know, it would be the Old Testament meets the, meets the Avengers or something like that. Um, but the next thing I would want them to know after they learn that um, is that the epics are still read in our schools. They're still read today. They're still translated. Uh, the Iliad was translated four times last year um, in popular presses. They're still translated because they speak to something uh, essentially human. You know, it's a text that starts out with an argument between two men who are supposed to be on the same side. And it's an argument about their relative worth, which develops into a long-term contemplation uh, on what it means to be a human being. Like, how do you fit in with your culture? How do you fit in with your family? Um, and what is the relationship between your temporary life and the course of uh, humankind and human history? And all of this is wrapped up into what is 24 books, but uh, into a text that looks at the same set of questions from uh, numerous ways. Um, so the epic is a testament to the depth of human thought for the past 24, 2500 years. Um, but also, uh, it's a learning process. Um, and I think that we keep it alive by reading it. Um, in fact, every time I read it with students, I learn something more, not just about the text, but about myself. Um, so I would say, you know, the, the Iliad and the Odyssey are two of the most challenging texts you could ever read. Um, but as my father always said, uh, nothing uh, worth having comes easy. Um, and in the end, the, the wisdom um, and the pleasure you get from reading the epics are definitely uh, worth the uh, work.